from John Neal's, the counsel for the House, on this first day of Colonel Norris' public testimony. We might remind you, as everybody gets up and stretches their legs there, that one of the reasons this is laborious, one of the reasons this is very precise, has to do with the fact that Colonel North and his attorney did not wish to see the counsels for the Senate and the House committees in private so that many of these minute details might be worked out in private so that, in essence, as has happened with previous witnesses, Colonel North and the committee, the politicians on the committee as well as the lawyers on the committee, uh, would, in a sense, follow something of a script. What has been going on here, as best we can tell, and it seems uh, to you as well as to us, I'm sure, risky to analyze it, is an attempt by uh, Counsel Neals to establish whether or not uh, laws established by Congress uh, were violated, most notably, among other things, the Arms Export Control Act, in terms of shipping weapons to Iran, both the tow, the wire-guided anti-tank missile, and the Hawk missiles, about which the Iranians were so angry when they finally got them, in violation of congressional laws. And, of course, that is what Colonel North has said on a number of occasions this afternoon he is not aware of. And as it came to the end there, he was saying that one of the things they did go was to try to find some of these findings, a presidential finding, which says it's okay even if the president makes it, as he did on a number of occasions, a retroactive finding. We'll come back in a moment to uh, talk to our... Uh, our more expert observers on this, Britt Hume and Sam Donaldson in Washington. But first, a message from your local station. The Persian Gulf crisis. Questions of policy. Questions of war. How did the U.S. get into this situation? Are we pushing for a fight? How far will we go to defend our allies? If it comes to war, are we prepared? The Jennings Couple Report, tonight. Friday, an ABC summer classic. I'm a homosexual. Martin Sheen and Marlo Thomas. What he's doing is... White House primarily on something called a professional office system, i.e. on the computer system. These are the messages which may have gone through a multitude of offices, but certainly from Colonel North to a variety of other people and back again. And these are the messages which Colonel North thought were going to disappear into the ether. You may recall from this morning when you hit the delete button, it turns out that wasn't the case. These are many of the messages which form the body of questioning which were discovered by the Tower Commission, which was appointed by the President, as you will recall, to investigate the behavior of the National Security Council. There are also many references to sensitive intelligence. As best we can tell, that is a euphemism here for classified material, which members of the administration and various other government agencies will have seen throughout this whole thing. Let's go to ABC's Britt Hume on Capitol Hill. Britt, one of the other things John Neal seems to be trying to establish is whether or not the operation, the sending of hot missiles to Iran, ceased because Colonel North and others suddenly found it was illegal. Do you sense that's been established? I, I, I'm not sure it's been established, but I do sense that he's probing in that area. One of the things I think we have to be on guard for, Peter, is, uh, is the direction of questioning and drawing too many conclusions from it. Normally, when the committee starts questioning a witness and they're proceeding down a particular avenue, you got a pretty good idea the committee knows there's something at the end of that avenue. In this case, of course, as you just mentioned, uh, Colonel North is being uh, taken over these uh, traces for the first time, and the committee is doing whatever fishing it might have done behind closed doors in public, and that accounts, I think, uh, in part for some of the questioning and also uh, in large measure for some of the tediousness of it. Well, tell me what you do, see, because you watch this every day. You've heard the 24 previous witnesses. What, what comes together for you? Well, I think the major news here, Peter, was made this morning. He was asked uh, fairly early on, uh, in effect, what he knew about what the president knew and when, and he absolved the president of any direct knowledge that he might have given him. And he said that he had talked to Admiral Poindexter on just about the time this all was breaking and asked Admiral Poindexter if the president knew, and the admiral said no. And he said, moreover, that he later talked to the president himself on the day that he was fired, and the president said uh, words to the effect, uh, I just didn't know. So we have, uh, in various ways, uh, Colonel North testifying that while he thought at all times that the president had approved his actions in the uh, use of uh, Iran arms money for the Contras, uh, that he had no specific evidence that, that uh, the president did in fact ever approve such an operation, and that certainly he had not discussed such a thing with the president. Okay, Brad, thanks very much for the moment. It certainly does make the, uh, the testimony of Admiral Poindexter, which is yet to come, even more compelling than people might have thought before Colonel North uh, made his appearance on the scene today. Standing by at the White House is ABC's Sam Donaldson. Sam, has the president been looking at any of this today? 
Well, no, Peter. It's uh, rather extraordinary because something very important is happening to the Reagan presidency up there, one way or the other. But we're told that uh, President Reagan watched none of it this morning. I don't know what he's doing at the moment. He could be watching right now, at least uh, when the break is over. But uh, we do understand that the president has one reaction to the hearing. Columnist Jack Anderson, who was in to see him in another matter, came out and reported that uh, Mr. Reagan told him that uh, he, the president, watched a commentator on television sometime after 12 noon. Uh, Anderson said the president said, I understand from the wire services that uh, North exonerated me, speaking about the question of whether he knew anything about the diversion of money from the sale of arms to Iran to the Nicaraguan Contras, and said the president to Anderson, according to Anderson, uh, North exonerated me, but the commentator I was... Uh, Watching uh, didn't seem to be able to say that. He couldn't, he couldn't say it. So this is a little reaction. The president apparently a, a little uh, upset that uh, someone didn't immediately uh, recite those words of North. Well, I think it is certainly worth repeating, isn't it, Sam, that the very first thing almost out of Colonel North's mouth this morning was that he had never discussed diverting funds from the arms sales to the countries, nor had the president ever discussed it with him. Yeah, well, of course, uh, the president can take the view that's an exoneration, but, of course, all that is is Colonel North testifying that he personally never discussed it with the president. There's almost a studied uh, uh, example here of uh, wanting to say to the country that the president and his people are not watching the, this hearing. A uh, television set that is normally on on a slow day like today at the White House in the lower press office where people work answering the phone and doing other activities is uh, off today. I mean, it, it's almost saying uh, to the public... Uh, uh, we're not watching, and Marlon Fitzwater, the press secretary, explains that the president thinks it's much more important to conduct the business of the nation than to be watching television. Well, Sam, for those of us uh, who are watching, and I uh, get a sense that from earlier today that the great many of us around the country, explain, explain this question of the findings. As, as the testimony ended there a short while later, Colonel North was saying that they finally went to these presidential findings, in a sense, to justify, to legalize the arms shipments, hot missiles and anti-tank missiles had already gone to Iran. Well, this is the naughty problem that we've been wrestling with for several months now. When did the President of the United States personally authorize the replenishment of weapons to uh, Israel so Israel could send those weapons to Iran as part of this swap deal? And, you know, we've gone back and forth on this. First, Mr. Reagan couldn't remember it all when he authorized it. Finally, his last version is that he remembers that he authorized that first shipment, August and September of 1985, but he doesn't remember exactly when. It's important because if... Uh, those weapons were shipped from Israel on an understanding of the United States they would be replaced, but the president had not authorized them. Clearly that understanding was uh, not uh, proper and it uh, may have been illegal. But if the president at first acknowledged that he authorized it up front, then the original cover story that he wasn't shipping arms for hostages, I mean, uh, that, that was silly, that wasn't his idea, would have been exploded, as indeed it has already been exploded uh, at this point. But they're stuck with that original chronology. The one that we heard North testify to today, that North says that uh, McFarland uh, changed uh, and uh, made false. And they still are trying to justify elements of that original chronology with what we know today as, as far as the facts go. Sam, and, and that really gives them a problem. Let me stop you there a second on the chronology. That was at the latter part of this morning's testimony. And Colonel Orr said he was not the only one who participated, as you said, McFarland did and Poindexter did, and other members of the Reagan administration of a very senior level did so knowing they were preparing the president to go on to a news conference just the next day and well, lie. That's true. L let me put it to you this way. Ronald Reagan met the press on November 19, 1986, and he misstated the facts in a number of instances. Now, he was using elements of this false chronology. Did he know it at the time we all said, well, did the president know it or they just gave him some material which was false and wrong? Well, subsequently, of course, we've learned that the president who misstated the fact that there was no third country involved in that early shipment, and in fact he knew that Israel was involved, has said that he did authorize that shipment. He can't remember exactly when. He knew Israel was involved. There are many elements of what Mr. Reagan said to the press and the nation on November 19, 1986, that were just flat wrong. He was using the false chronology, and he understood that he was saying things that were not correct. Okay, Sam, thanks very much. I guess the point I was trying to make there was that the people on the president's staff of the highest level were preparing a false chronology, and as Colonel North said in an exchange with John Neal this morning, no one raised the issue of the fact that they were indeed preparing a chronology that would be used in the public, used for the public, that in fact was not correct. There is the Senate caucus room, which as you can see is enormously 
crowded today. If you have been with us since these hearings began about an hour and 50 minutes ago, you will also have noticed that there were some people who, as they often do on occasions like this, took the opportunity to extend a political message. A number of people who were sitting in the back of the caucus room in yellow t-shirts, uh, which said on them, no arms aid for the Contras fighting in Nicaragua. They were at one point, or at least some of them at one point, were escorted quietly out by the Capitol Hill police. And now Colonel North and his attorney, Brendan Sullivan, come back for what has been a slightly more subdued, though as we pointed out, a very precise session this afternoon. In the early going today, for those of you who are with us for that, it was a good deal feistier than it has been this afternoon with Colonel North and Brendan Sullivan, his counsel, and John Neal being extremely sharp with each other. It has been not quite like that this afternoon. The gavel from Senator Inouye.